Welcome to another episode of Wind Over Water. Uh, today we're going to be out looking for backyard boat finds again. And I have found actually a handful of boats in the same location. And I think over the next couple of weeks we're going to go through several boats with you here on our show. This week we want to have a look at a boat that's a, a real, real classic. And I mean hardcore going across oceans kind of boat. Uh, but still a nice little pocket cruiser. When you're looking for backyard boats, you don't always have to go much further than the marina you're in. I mean, most marina owners don't sell boats. They have no interest in selling boats. And yet they have boats come into their possession all the time. Uh, people don't pay their bills. Sometimes people offer, offer their boats in exchange for the bills that they owe. Um, you know, they come on hard times. Sometimes folks pass away and their their spouse will have the marina owner try and sell the boat for them and sometimes boats just get forgotten in the backyard so this week we're going to look at our marina we're going to show you one boat that's a, a real beauty and uh, then I think uh, next week we'll probably do the same uh, go back to the marina again and there, there's a few good good options there for people so if you're interested in sailing, you want to uh, take on sailing as your hobby, you'd like to eventually do a little bit of blue water sailing, um, you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money. And if you're a young person wanting to get into sailing, uh, you can take that on uh, with just a little bit of cash and a little bit of elbow grease. And uh, these are the things I want to demonstrate through this series that um, you don't have to be a millionaire to take on the cruising life. And we saw lots of boats when we were in the south that were inexpensive boats that were found in the back of boat yards that had a bunch of young people on them. And uh, I think that's an exciting way to, to uh, enjoy a fantastic hobby. Stick with us and we'll show you a few beauties. Well, we've got a real treat for you today. I've stumbled across a boat that's fairly close to home. In fact, it couldn't get any closer. The boat I'm talking about today is a Bristol 27. You know how we like Bristols. find any markings on the transom to show me what her age is, but she's hull 182, and uh, it's a 27 foot boat, nice lifelines, nice teak combing in the cockpit, beautiful teak tow rail on it, a real classic looking boat. Three hundred and thirty-seven of this Carl Ulberg design were built between 1966 and 1978. The Bristol 27 was featured in John Vigor's book, 20 Small Sailboats That Can Take You Anywhere. This is a true classic design. Her narrow beam, low shear, long overhangs, full keel and cutaway forefoot show her Scandinavian folk boat roots. She's no slouch on the race course either. So what we've got 
got here is a real late 60s, early 70s era uh, sailboat. Now, the designs of Carl Alberg are renowned for being very seaworthy. In a compact boat, they've got a lot to offer. Uh, Carl built his boats to go to sea, and he really didn't build them for plunking around, although they do fairly well on the race course. These boats typically are made for people who uh, on a budget want to go and do some blue water sailing. So the full keel really gives you that and the uh, displacement ratio on these is is pretty high so they're a comfortable ride when you're at sea. They track very nicely. Uh, very small rig, uh, short rig and long booms, sort of traditional kind of 70s style boats. The Bristol 27 is uh, an early boat in the history of Bristol yachts uh, a, a company that built our boat actually, Windover, is a Bristol 411. Mind you, much later, it's 20 years down the road after this boat. This boat was built by the folks who own Pearson Yachts. Um, they bought a company in Bristol, Rhode Island, um, and they transformed that company into what is known today as Bristol Yachts, and one of their early offerings was this boat. Now, Carl, Carl Alberg had already been selling designs at that time to companies uh, like Pearson, uh, like uh, Whitby Boatworks, also built uh, Alberg 30s. Uh, later on you'll see Nye Boatworks building Alberg 29s, Alberg 22s, these sorts of boats. But the Bristol was an early, an early winner. This boat is in, I want to say, really clean condition uh, for her age. She's got lots of neat little, little little drawers and what have you for stowage. She's got non-pressurized water and a sink. Little storage compartments here. I think this is a refrigerator, yeah. So an ice box. It goes way back there too so you'd be able to add a refrigeration unit to it if you wanted to do some extended cruising. Here's a locker. A little dark in here, folks, but these are the cushions back here and in a big V berth. And I think there's a toilet right behind this door. Yes, there is. This is a toilet right back there. Now, my understanding about this boat is that it, uh, it does need a little bit of cosmetic work. Structurally, it seems to be very good. The keel is solid. Of course, it's not bolted in. It's molded. Uh, the, the hull and the deck seem to be in decent repair, uh, but somebody has gone around and tried to paint the exterior of it and not done a terribly good job. That shouldn't impact the way she sails, and I think whoever buys it could get away with not touching the exterior for some years to come, but if you did want to doll it up, you can go back and watch our videos on what's involved in painting. And of course this is a much smaller boat than we took on, ours being a 41 footer and this a 27. So uh, I wouldn't be too intimidated about painting the hull or the hull and deck on this uh, in very short order, it wouldn't take that much time. It is a great little project and a small solid boat that could take you just about anywhere, and I mean anywhere. Like, there's no reason that you couldn't uh, outfit this boat, say, for even an Atlantic crossing if you wanted to, and yet you're able to buy it for, I think the guy is uh, willing to take $6,500 for this boat. So uh, that's pretty cheap for something that's able to take you far in a field. So, anyway, there she is. I don't know anything about the year, but I'm going to guess it's like a 69, something like that. The owner doesn't know either, so I think it's about a 69, though. Bristol 27. Uh, no inboard, so you've got the storage in behind here that would normally be for an engine. Uh, that space can now be used for storage. And instead, she's got a lovely four-stroke Honda back in the back, and uh, that'll give you uh, trouble-free service for many, many years, I would imagine. So that's what we're looking at. Nice rig. Uh, there's uh, sails with it as well. So you really you could put it together and go sail it locally, and certainly in the Great Lakes, uh, in fairly short order. So there she is, folks.
another backyard boat. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Click the little bell and we can send you notifications of our next video. If you're enjoying these videos, you can always go down below and look at the Patreon link. We hope you enjoyed this backyard boat find and we'll see you next week for another one. So long.